Um, I'm going to talk about augmented reality. Augmented reality basically is a superimposition of synthetic information over real images. Not really real, but video images representing reality. Here is a picture of what we have done at uh, this university about 13 years ago. We had uh, all these head-mounted displays, a camera capturing reality. We were looking to buildings at university, and then we were superimposing labels saying that this is building four or building three, and we were unbelievably excited about it. Today, this seems really pathetic. At the time, it was uh, a breakthrough. Uh, where do I point? OK. Uh, here in this campus, we were also pioneers in another sort of augmented reality. We developed a virtual site scene. In, in the beginning, this virtual site scene was some sort of a tool to defend our office from aliens. We were using this tool to kill aliens, like in a video game. But then we use it for uh, tourism. In, in many castles in Portugal and uh, elsewhere, we have this virtual sightseeing, looking at the landscape and superimposing information on, uh, on what we are uh, looking at. Omitted reality right now is becoming commercial. It's becoming a big business, and one of the leading companies in, is the uh, Dutch Layar. Layar has pioneered augmented reality on the smartphones. And this is a picture on, the, on the Amsterdam. So you are looking, you are using the camera zone of the smartphone, and you are superimposing um, in real time uh, information. There is another sort of augmented reality where basically you use some sort of marks. Everyone knows about QR codes. They are uh, very popular, but very seldom used. But in many instances, you, we have developed cards that basically are captured by uh, ca video cameras. And again, uh, some images are rendered. This is a very interesting experiment we have done for a, a well-known brands, uh, where basically we use, the, the, again, these marks, these cards. But we are trying to some sort of create a, a, a small story. In this case, um, each card enables the rendering of some sort of an object. And some of these objects have behaviors. And here you are creating a small, uh, small film. We have done other experiments in, in education, uh, in digital storytelling. And I really think that this sort of telling animated stories is going to become uh, very popular in the next few years. But actually, uh, the work I and my colleagues have done in augmented reality is not either mobile augmented reality or mark-based augmented reality. Basically, our inspiration was an old Woody Allen movie called The Purple Rose of Cairo. In that movie, for the older people here in the room, they probably remember, there is an actor that leaves the film and enters reality. And our dream has always been to do the reverse. Let's get into the movie. So a few years ago, we imagined that we, were, we could be at home, sitting, looking to a, a Formula One car race, and driving a virtual car, and drive that car against the real cars in real time. So we bought a Scalatrix uh, racetrack in a commercial uh, place. We set up a camera. We, uh, we, we, we drove those real cars, and then in the, in the PC, we um, created a virtual car that was competing in real time against uh, the real cars. And we have done that on, on mobile phones. This is a, a, another type of experiment where you are, your hand in, is inside of the movie. And you are uh, just working with two, 2D cameras. And we are playing with, with some bubbles. And you can see the precision. This is quite simple, but it illustrates what we were uh, seeking. You get inside the movie. You are not controlling avatars like in most uh, interfaces of this type. You are inside of the movie, and you are playing with objects. 
And uh, with the 3D cameras, uh, in this case, we are working, we worked with Canesta that then was bought by Microsoft. Right now, Kinect is very popular. With 3D cameras, we can do much more. Your hand becomes like a cursor in 3D, uh, very precise. And with the platform, uh, Wideream's developed, Wivision, we managed to interact with objects in 3D in real time. And those objects add some physical behaviors. So in this case, we have um, Anto Almada, at one time, that one time won the Oscar for special effects, was playing with these kind of objects. Okay, so right now with the Kinect camera, there are lots of games coming into the market. Um, but we were really pioneers in this area. And uh, we have developed since then many applications. Right now, for instance, there is one for uh, surgeons, neurosurgeons, that is becoming quite popular. OK, right, these are much more polished uh, application. This was uh, developed in, um, the for Nike at Staples Center. So uh, where the Los Angeles Lakers so pretty much uh, play. The and do here, is the idea is that you become Kobe Bryant. Shoot. And you are shooting no uh, free throws at the size of point in the uh, This application the was developed here with the help of try? Tisha Pinichaito, the greatest okay, so Portuguese basketball player that just retired. And she worked with us calibrating the system. So here you are. You are losing by two points. You have a three-point uh, free throw. Last second. And again, the 3D camera captures your we'll movement. Take it, we'll take it. And you, you shoot and so forth. It went in. It hit the whole entire rim, but it went in. Every bucket, doesn't matter how it looks, as long as it goes in. Oh, I go. So if you go to the overtime. Nike store, Staples Center, Los points. Angeles, and then the West uh, this game is probably still it's there. But uh, the game we are really proud of is this collective game with 20,000 people that was played in Lyon, where again, you go inside the screen, this time we are 20,000 uh, uh, people, and they play a simple game. Yes. So this is augmented reality in a large scale. I mean, the, the, the dream of, the, of, of reversing Purple Rose of Cairo was that not only with one actor, but 20,000. It's uh, simple actions, but uh, we have done it. Allez, vous êtes chaud ce soir. Faites-moi bouger la balle, là, le curseur, le plus grand joystick. So. Till now, I've talked about games, and games are very simple movies, very simple interactive movies. Uh, this is a, a much more complex approach. In this case, this is like a, um, what we attempted was to do some sort of interactive Roger Rabbit, or to make some sort of interactive movie where Shrek uh, is leaving the movie and going into your uh, living room. So in this case, we have this young girl, and we have a mascot that is playing in our showroom. And she looks at the screen, there is a camera, and she can play with the mascot in real time. So you, you do the shadow projections in real time, you, you do the collision detection in real time, and the girl can play with the mascot and can have special powers. For instance, she uh, touches the table. I'm sorry for the quality of the movie, but she touches the table and the table changes colors and so forth. And we really think that in the, in the future, uh, movies will evolve in this kind of uh, interaction, um, interaction games or
Okay, and of course you can place all kinds of virtual characters and so forth. So basically, you can insert virtual characters in real movies and have interaction between real actors and, and those virtual characters. And uh, more recently, uh, Disney has done something spectacular on Times Square, which basically shows a more polished, although um, more limited from a technical standpoint, view of our dream. So this is some sort of a mix of the real and virtual. And it uses all those public screens that are at Times Square. Okay, but until now, what we have seen is really the superimposition of synthetic images of real images, which are not real images, are video images. And uh, five years ago, I started with uh, Professor Pina from this university, a really revolutionary project. Let's do really augmented reality. Let's have synthetic image over real objects. And basically, the photochemistry group started working on inks invisible links that become visible. And the inspiration was this sort of a Samsung promotional video of a package that in the beginning was white, and by shaking, the, the lettering would come. And then you could watch uh, uh, videos. You could really superimpose synthetic information on real objects that were first really in a blank stage and then uh, all kinds of information. Five years later, we cannot do exactly this, but we are getting closer. We can shake and the letters will appear. Um, we, we, we cannot watch videos still, but we will get there. So, we are really creating the future of augmented reality. But of course, we cannot do the, this last part of the video. This is magic, this is not augmented reality, this is totally fake reality. Thank you very much.